Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm live from Confab, so I'm sitting in my hotel room in between sessions, and I'm excited to answer today's question for you. Today's question comes from Jim, and Jim wants to know, is there a best UX process to follow? This is a good question because I feel like a lot of practitioners, and especially new practitioners, get really caught up in what process should I follow, and am I hitting all the right steps? The challenge is that nothing works the perfect way that we want it to. We live in the real world, and so when you're in the real world, you can have a UX process that you love and a UX process that you follow, but what you want to have, the best processes, are the ones that are flexible and that can adapt to the context that you're working in and the content that you have to work with in terms of do you have a full team available or are you only working with one developer? Do you have access to customers to talk to or do you only have ancillary data? Those can all impact your UX process and also your output. And so when you're thinking about a UX process and you're thinking, oh, I need to do research and create personas and I need to do usability testing and I need to have a card sort and I need to do wireframes and I need to do three rounds of high fidelity design and all those different process pieces, that's great. And understand where each of those fits in an overall process and where each of those adds value to creating a product, but understand when you can let each of those pieces fall by the wayside or adjust in a certain way in order to make the work that you're doing with the team that you're actually doing with go smoother and go better. Because at the end of the day, you're working in the real world and it's really hard to just follow a blanket process no matter the situation and no matter the context. The other thing is to find opportunities to bring different parts of the process in at different points than you normally would want to. And this could mean doing usability testing on your competitor sites because you don't have a product yet, but you want to do usability testing now while you still have the time rather than later when you're a week away from launch. And so that can give you a lot of insights that can inform your designs. Can you also use ability to test your designs? Yes, absolutely. And if you have the time and the ability, highly recommend it. But Figure out where in the process you can make it happen and how you can use that information to improve your product. Because the process is only as good as the product that you create and what you're able to do. And so at the end of the day, definitely know what process that you love to work under and how you like to run UX projects, but understand that they don't run in a vacuum. Another great example of this is Agile. When you're working in an Agile environment and you're working in UX, there's an idea for some people that you stay a couple weeks ahead in the sprint, but you still sort of work in a waterfall fashion. There's an idea for some people that you're just constantly churning out wireframes and you don't do a lot of testing. It really depends on the context. But when you're adjusting to a system like Agile, you really need to adjust your process to fit that as well. How do you ensure that testing is a part of it? How do you ensure that you're designing with the users in mind? And how do you ensure that at the end of the day, you're still building something that's going to work for real people in the real situations that they're in? And so that's what I would recommend in terms of finding a best process, is to understand all the pieces at play in an ideal process, and then understand how you can adjust or be flexible with them in your own organizations and with your own clients. Join me again tomorrow. If you have any other questions, definitely let me know in the comments. Or you can email me at hello at pixelsforhumans.com. I'll be speaking tomorrow, so my video will be a bit late, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have along the way. Thanks for joining me in my 30 days of UX. See you tomorrow. Bye.